One of the most fun aspects of a Dynasty League is trades, and we've got your trade for candidates, your trade away candidates, and some trade tips on today's episode. You don't want to miss the conclusion of Dynasty Week. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's a real Doppler effect that time. At least on my side. Thursday, May 16th. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Happy to be with you. Jason, you said you're feeling a little bit tired today. I am feeling a little bit tired. I got, did a bunch of wind sprints. I got a great night's sleep. Huh. Um, too much? <clears throat> too much work. We're just we're, we're recording all the UDK uh, videos, grinding on numbers. Yeah. If you it's exhausting. If you've been on the uh, uh, back in the in the coal mine. Yeah, exactly. I I know what it's like coming home with soot on your face. That's right. Uh, no, if you if you've been on X, you will have seen a couple of the bloopers. That have transpired. Oh yeah, <laughs> while filming the player profile videos, so you will enjoy that at the FF Ballers. We talked about Arian Foster a little bit. Yeah, we did. <laughs> or someone. <laughs> yeah, I tried to. I tried to talk about him, um, but uh, we. This is the Thursday show. We did a Tuesday show, and it is. Welcome to Dynasty Week. I feel like the drop, the second drop should be like, you're still in Dynasty <laughs> Week. Like, because they already got welcomed in. Yeah, it's not really a welcome. But right now it is Dynasty Week. Today we're going over trade tips, trade targets, trade away players, some NFL news that has Dynasty implications. And we have a Dynasty giveaway right now on the website, footclangiveaway.com. A signed Devon A. Chan jersey, a player that I know many of you out there that have him on their roster. Is very much hoping is a great dynasty asset. What, just twenty two years old? Yeah, yeah. He's a young and could be the best ever or could flame out. <laughs> Those are the only two options. It really does feel like that though. Like I don't see a world where there's just like an average, below average, mediocre long career. I can see that world. Really? Yeah, for sure. And just he could just be really good some of the time he's on the field. Like a he could have a Darren Sproles career. For sure. Yeah, th that is what I'm saying. I, I have a harder time seeing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what else is going on? We've got the Dynasty Pass available right now on the UDK Plus. Startup rankings, rookie rankings, team opportunity charts, and a whole bunch of Dynasty resources. That's ultimatedraftkit.com. In fact, if you don't pre-order it before June 1st, you will not be pre-ordering it. No. Yeah, it's out. You know what I mean? Yeah, I totally It'll know. just be released. You'll just be ordering it. Full at, price. For more money. So, ultimatedraftkit.com, get instant access there with the UDK Plus. And I think I think we're good. And, and Papa Josh does a, a very important note because Papa Josh oh, runs. Oh, yeah. Look, yeah. Papa, Papa Josh is the customer support. He is community also, manager. Community manager. What do you call yourself in your, uh, in your email handle? The customer support master? Yes, sir. Yeah, of course he puts master in there. What? Who authorized that? He authorized it. He, uh, we don't see those emails. Anyways, he made a good point that after look once it's out, don't come to Josh and say, "Hey, can I get that pre-order pricing?" Because you had five months. Or no, something. you can, you can actually still get it right now if you have right a now. time yes. machine at that time. <laughs> you can go back okay. in time. Yeah, but otherwise, no. Yeah, don't bother Josh. No, he's he's very he's busy. old and grumpy. Oh, different different perspectives on yeah. it there. Uh, quick question of the day. A Dynasty Trade Tips question from Instagram. Powder East writes in, what is the best way to find common player trade value with league mates in Dynasty? This is interesting because Andy and I actually, and I don't know if he knows this, but we have the exact same answer in our doc. Um, Andy's answer is... 
No, no. My, he, he has my answer. no clue how to find <laughs> trades anymore in our league. My answer is you have to find the right type of partner. And so the reason that I say they're the same is, Andy, you have a contending team. But I know my real problem. What is it? I don't have any tradable assets. Exact, exactly. You are. You have fulfilled one type of... You've completed. He's, You've done everything you he's can. He's just swiping that Mind credit you, card. My team has Josh Allen, Christian McCaffrey, yeah, Mike Evans, Travis Kelsey. Nobody yep. swipe, comes swipe, knock. Swipe, no, swipe, no swipe. nobody. Those are not all swipes. <laughs> but Josh no, Allen. I'm is, saying. I'm saying you got your players by swiping the credit card. So like all your draft picks are gone, and you're you're heavily loaded into your starting roster. The easiest way to find a trade partner in Dynasty is to categorize people into whether they are contenders or whether they are rebuilders. And obviously there's some gray area in there. And sometimes you have league managers who should be a rebuilder and they think they're a contender. You try to show them the error of their ways. But um, <laughs> but the, the thing is... is Did it, something happen recently? <laughs> well, yes, but... <laughs> Uh, it's, it's just, you know, that like, always goes well. Con oh, it, it convince goes another person that their team yeah. can't win. It's so great when yeah. you, when you go to someone you're like, Hey, I look, we're both in agreement that your team stinks. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. We're really, we weren't in agreement. The nice thing is they didn't make the playoffs. Um, so going back to my point here is that when you, there are certain teams that players are very good for and very bad for. We talked about it on last uh, episode. Derrick Henry is the perfect example of this, right? If you are more of a rebuilding team and you have Derrick Henry, my goodness, trade him for a first. He's not going to help you long term. Right. You're not going to win a championship this year. If you are a contending team and you could be put over the top and your draft pick in the first round is going to be a low, you know, lower first round pick, lower hit rate, go get Derrick Henry. And so the reason why you can't find trades, Andy, is because you're a contending team with all the old dudes that you can usually scoop up in great trades. You, no one else wants those guys. So so just to say it another way that I think would be valuable, you want to find common player trade values, but it's that is very difficult to, in general. People have so many different pr perspectives on individual players and those perspectives change based on the intention of the team in that season and what they see as their future or what they see as a player that they want to trade away. I mean, if there was a place where a practical trade block would be the most valuable to be used regularly, Dynasty Leagues is the place for that. Because I can't read all of your minds. You know what I mean? Like, you don't know if somebody has a Ramondre and is like, I'm kind of done with them. I want to move on, or I, this is part of my building block. There are players, it's easy to say that Marvin Harrison Jr. is a building block. It's easy to say that Travis Kelsey is is on the way out. But there's players on the in-between, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, I think Saquon Barkley is a player like that. Saquon Barkley sure. um, is, what, going to be 28 this year during the season? Is yeah, it? He's, a, he's a little bit older, but he's got a brand-new contract. Yeah, so you can see Saquon through both lenses. You could see him being a trade-away candidate for a team that wants to get younger, or you could see him as a buy candidate for a team that wants to compete. And uh, the, I would just throw in that you need to have, you need to have a bunch of players, like, like a tier of players who you're interested in. It's if you have a very specific name, which funny enough, we're, we're going to be giving some names who we think are players for, that, that yeah. we, that I would like to trade for, or I'd like to trade them away. But if you have, if you're targeting a name, you are boutique shopping. You are you know, you are getting a personalized deal just for you off of this one player, which means that the price is going to be a lot. Like the trade can get done, but you may end up having to to overpay in your opinion of trying to get this player because you're you're so locked in on one name. Make sure you have a bunch of names and then just start getting some conversations going. And and that way, at least the the net is wider, so you you know, you know what the, your goal is. I'm trying to improve my wide receiver position, so I'm going after this range of a player. And if you do want to go hunting for one specific option, hide it. <laughs> <laughs> and I do mean that. I mean hide it in a bigger trade. 
I've I've accomplished that many times in Dynasty by not making I don't want to go and just focus on one player and then I'm sending a bunch of assets and it looks like I'm just like they know how hungry you are if you're staring at it. Let them know that you got some options. Put a three for three trade, a four for four trade, make it bigger to try to Trojan horse the player you want into a deal. Sometimes you have to do that. Yeah, or maybe start a little bit above that player. You know, it's like you you see and the player settle on, on that their, player. And settle like, oh, all yeah. right. Yeah. What about what Mike would you shakes do? his hands because he knows he don't got what it takes to get these done. <laughs> Is he shaking his hands? <laughs> I, I mean, I am the reigning dynasty champion, so. Well, you see, you don't need to trade. <laughs> um. All right, let's uh, jump into a little bit of news. News and notes from around the league. We are recording this episode of the show just before the release of the 2024 NFL schedule. There will be an article on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, detailing 10 insights from the schedule release, and you'll be able to check that out. What else do we have? We have an announcement that we get to watch the offseason of the Giants on Hard yep. Knocks. Hard Knocks. Which Mike sounded interested in. Well, I just it, I was saying it's Hard Knocks off season. It comes out July second. Uh, what is it involve? I'm not really sure. I hope it's not just like rookie camp and and stuff like that because I don't know if that's very interesting. But the NFL to me has a huge untapped market for behind the scenes NFL draft footage. When the, when they put those out, they are interesting they're compelling i don't know if it's enough to carry an entire series but whenever you see like like a good five minute clip on social media and that's a long clip to sit down and watch but if it's the draft i want to see what's going on the bills have signed wide receiver marquez valdez scantling formerly of the chiefs it's a one-year deal worth up to 4.5 million let me read you <laughs> the bills wide receiver room okay Keon Coleman, Curtis Samuel, Khalil Shakir, MVS, Mac Hollins, KJ Hamler, Justin Shorter, Chase Claypool, Andy Isabella, Quintez Cephas. So you're telling me MVS is a starter? I'm telling you, he could be. He probably is. He's probably in more of that Gabe Davis role where you're going to field stretch and catch half your passes. I mean, I would say that right now, uh, three wide, I would expect to see – I would expect Curtis Samuel Keon will Coleman will be out be there and Curtis Samuel will be out there. Beyond that, depending on formation, Shakir and MBS. And then they like Matt Collins, but who knows? And the rest of the guys, they all like they were all dynasty ads ten years ago. It'll get thinned out. It will. But you have a fifty eight percent vacated target number in Buffalo, which is the second most in the National Football League. So no Gabe, no Hardy, no Diggs, no Sherfield. Hello, Dalton Kincaid? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. the real winner here. Any other comments on that uh, news or anything else you guys want to talk about? No, I don't think so. I, uh, I, I, I'm I, excited to see the trade for and, and trade away candidates. I have not read your guys' yet. Oh. So I'm I'm looking forward to being Is surprised. Is that true? I, I have seen yours in the past, and I've already forgot them. Okay. Um, and I don't know Mike's for sure. So when you say it, I'll be like, oh, yeah. All right. Let's take a quick break. Come back with those trade candidates. Let's talk trades. Well, like I said, the Dynasty startup rankings are in the UDK Plus, and we each wanted to pick out a trade for and trade away candidate specific to Dynasty leagues. So, who wants to get us started? Uh, I'll jump That's in. That and Mike was just saying, nope. <laughs> well, I would because mine, mine's a little more uh, boring, ob obscure, oh, okay. obscure. No, it's never boring talking right. trades. Uh, and a guy I think that might be interesting to trade for right now because he has been uh, kind of deleted a little bit from from your memory because, look, football, one week at a time, and this guy really lost his second year in the NFL. Greg Dulcich, tight end for the Denver Broncos. And Mike uh, loves his tight ends. They're just the most fun. <laughs> they're, they're the most fun. And On the team with Adam Troutman, this is a – Surprising yes. pick for you to be in on. Because you were not in on him while he was not hurt last year. Well, I just really was hoping that Adam Troutman could do something. But Greg Dulcich, 
Uh, I mean, always, at least in the off season, was spoke of very highly by uh, head coach Sean Payton. He only played two games. He does seem to have a, a hamstring problem, kind of like Christian Watson, where it feels like there's a chronic situation going on. So that is a red flag. But Jerry Judy is gone. That's 18% of the targets. And people have been talking about the Broncos, like the wide receiver room. Who's like, who's it going to be? Is Sutton even going to be on this team? You know, we, we got Troy Franklin in the fourth round. Good Marvin Mims. Because it's only like, it's a whole bunch of <laughs> um, Josh Reynolds. Josh Reynolds, exactly. It's a whole bunch of gigantic question marks. Meanwhile, Greg Dolces is just there and was like he was a weapon in his rookie season at the tight end position. He's not aged out by any means. He's twenty four and part of uh, part of the dynasty pass. We got our our boy Big Marv. He puts out these incredible articles about the life cycle of dynasty positions and at the tight end. Like Greg Dulcich is just coming into it because 25 is kind of like that's the big breakout year for for tight ends. So I'm I'm not overly concerned that it hasn't happened yet, but I'm just looking at this team and why couldn't it be Greg Dulcich? Why couldn't he end up being like the number two option on this team with all the guys that are there? Do you think that there's potential for you know like a delayed breakout? We got the the second year pause for Dulcich. There was. A lot of excitement. Yeah, there was. Because, you know, he, he got 33 passes in 10 games as a rookie. And quite a few of them were big plays. Yeah, he was 12 and a half yards per catch. So like, that's pretty solid. There was a lot of excitement. It seems to have died down. Jason, do you are you in on any of that? Yeah, I, I he, actually... He'd be cheap right now. Yes, I actually am because of that. It, it's very, very affordable to get Dulcich. In fact, you wouldn't go after Dulcich... You'd probably just have him almost be a throw-in in some other bigger trade. Um, but he is someone that has been left for dead that really isn't. He really isn't dead. The opportunity for the team and, and to, to receive targets is there. Going into last year, you remember <clears throat> Peyton was talking about him being the joker role yeah. and all of that. And then, unfortunately, he lost last season to an injury. But it's not like they filled the depth chart yeah they brought in Troy Franklin and Reynolds but they lost Jerry Judy so he's still necessary here and um you know look it's it's a low hit rate it's a tight end most tight ends don't matter in the end he probably won't matter but unlike redraft leagues right where you just stream the position you just go to the waiver every week and grab someone and whatever you kind of need a stockpile you stream the position from your roster mm -hmm. so having four or five capable tight end sometimes is the way to go if you don't have a I don't, Kelsey or I don't Andrews. know if he's had a good performance since I dressed up as him for Halloween oh yeah, that's yeah well when Weird Al Yankovic dresses up as him <laughs> it's really unfortunate for your future productivity and so that was I think the problem yeah you should have just gone I was Weird Al dressing Dulcich. up as yes. Greg Dulcich didn't but, you get put in a wheel you do Weird know the Al. only difference between Weird Al and Greg Dulcich right height uh, muscles <laughs> yeah same thing the it, but it's like if you have may, maybe you haven't done your rookie draft yet and you get in you're in the third round and you're like well man should i take a chance on like sanders right you know I, yeah jatavian sanders or like these rookie i'm not talking about ben Sinnott because he'll be gone but it's like these other tight ends who are just kind of there maybe you're looking at just throw out your third round pick i i Kyle got him for a third exactly. in his league. Yeah, so this is that's the type of trade I think could go through. The person who has Greg Dulcich is done. The, yeah, they're they're not they're, their hopes of of him becoming something are are very very low, which cause that's it, the time. It, it becomes saying like the hit rate for this to actually work out it's it's a low probability, but the probability of any third round rookie pick is so low. And the fact that he is going into year three, I mean, it's sort of year two because that whole year was deleted, but he, he's already functioning in an NFL offense, already has the support of his head coach. So I, I think that it's it's worth taking the Hail Mary for him. I'll bring up Kyler Murray as my trade for candidate in Dynasty Leagues because he's the most affordable, potential, top five guy. And – this is not I, – I think what we've seen is we've got two years damaged by injury, right? Yeah. The end of uh, the 2022 season, and then he didn't play all but eight games last year. So 
The ACL injury spans two off seasons, and we have two off seasons where there was actual talk going into both drafts about whether the Arizona Cardinals would move on from him. Two years ago, there was a lot of it, and then we were sitting here on this show, being from the Valley, saying, "Listen, the, Jonathan Gannon, like they're going to his OSU um, uh, statue reveal. Yeah, right? his, his actual like statue reveal at the university." Um, and they support this guy, and they believe in him. And then you go through the season, and the Cardinals have a high pick, and they're still questioned. Oh, he could have get traded to Minnesota. They didn't need a quarterback. There's been a lot of negative energy around Kyler Murray. But the Kyler Murray on the field was the number seven, number two, and number 10 quarterback for his first three seasons, and then you have two injury-shortened years. And you look into last year, his 17-game pace, it was pretty good. He was going to run for 500-plus yards again. He was the quarterback nine on points per game once he came back. With no, with with the Cardinals throwing the ball to wideouts, 20, 29th uh, most in the league. So you add Marvin Harrison and Zay Jones, this is the year you'll start to see production emerge, and um, this is the time you can get him at that discount. I don't know if people believe fundamentally that Kyler is a franchise quarterback, but he's nowhere in the world of the Justin Fields getting tossed away like this is a great passer a great runner those question marks aren't real they were just conjecture because of the Cardinals struggling so you know you're not throwing the ball to Michael Wilson and Greg Dorch it's, Marvin Harrison has arrived and I think this is the the one time you might be able to you know I could let me give you an example and I did it I made the offers they weren't good enough because no one trades with me anymore <laughs> Oh, woe is me. But I looked this offseason in a dynasty format at moving Josh Allen for Kyler Murray plus a significant asset. Yeah. And that's the kind of trade I'm talking about. I, I've done it many times in dynasty. I traded Mahomes at the top, Rodgers at, at the top. Didn't you do it with Herbert too? I with Herbert? Yes, absolutely. It's it's a great strategy. When you've got the, the, the young superstar quarterback to trade him for another – Really good quarterback for fantasy plus plus a haul plus a haul. So to me, that's how you get Kyler right now. Is you you move a player? Maybe it's Jalen Hurts. You know, maybe you're moving Jalen Hurts and you're getting Kyler Murray and a really really. I'm not talking about a third round pick. I'm talking about you got to go get like a. You know, is it Kyler Murray and a really good wide receiver? To and then swapping Hurts for him. Yeah, I, I I don't mind that at all. If if you've been listening, I mean. I I love Kyler Murray's prospects going forward this year. There's it doesn't even matter if he's good. A, as in, there's all the conversation and you know just NFL circles of like, is Kyler Murray good? Is he a good quarterback? Is he a great quarterback? Is he a franchise quarterback? Who cares? It doesn't matter. He can throw for four thousand yards. His sophomore season, he threw for like thirty nine hundred plus yards, and he can run for seven hundred fifty yards. So for fantasy purposes, he's gonna be just fine. Uh, my trade for target more along the lines of Mike's it's a, a lower ranked more of a dynasty only asset um it's Kendra Miller uh last year's rookie running back for the New Orleans Saints who unfortunately pretty much missed his rookie season uh he started out the offseason with a knee injury missed the first couple of games and training camp and all of this jazz and that really set him up way behind the eight ball and then unfortunately once he came back he had a stretch of games where it was like, okay, they're getting him involved, and then boom, an ankle injury. Missed essentially almost the rest of the 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 time there for the Saints. Came back at the very end of the season, and, and honestly, he saw 14 opportunities in that Week 18 game against Atlanta. Kendra Miller's a pretty good player. Like That's, that's really the crux of my argument is that he's good. Um, he was a, you know, a junior year at TCU. He had 1,400 rushing yards, 17 rushing – touchdowns he was an early declare he's 5'11 215 with speed he can catch the ball he does all the things that kind of check my boxes you know what I'm saying when I'm what? looking at scouting what? a player what how do partner <laughs> yeah what? and you've got Alvin Kamara <laughs> I just feel like what he wants us happened? not to pay attention to that but oh I mean pay attention by all means my you know boxes. I'm just saying when it gets me hot and heavy when I'm scouting a player you, you all them boxes southern bell <laughs> yeah it's like what? He's, you know, he's a, a, he's a caller. He's a gentleman, <laughs> a gentleman caller. caller. 
Kendra Miller, You're a.k.a. Just, the gentleman caller, gracious. is a good prospect, <laughs> and he's coming into a situation here with the Saints, going into year two. Now, he's clearly behind Alvin Kamara. Alvin Kamara is a player in redraft leagues. I, I think he's going to have a really solid season. He was uh, you know, top five in points per game last year on volume. Was not very efficient. His yards per carry, for example, have gone from like 4.6 back in the day to now two out of the last three years have been sub four yards a carry. His passing efficiency has gone down too. He's catching a ton of footballs like he always does, but he's not doing as much with them. And the other backup that they brought in last year, Jamal Williams, if you are not familiar with his work last season, you don't need to be. It was uh, hashtag no. bad. Yeah. Uh, he was awful. He went from however many, I believe, 223 touchdowns a year prior yeah. to one last year when they got him that in a last second. And it was, <laughs> it was when they thought they were taking a knee. So it wasn't. The, the team made a decision. I yeah. need to put it to the test, though. I want to have a conversation briefly about okay. your thoughts on Kenry Miller because – you know, Mike just brought up the third round pick, the Greg Dulcich situation. You're looking at the second round of rookie drafts. That's where Trey Benson lives. That's where Jalen Wright is currently. That's where Marshawn Lloyd is. Sure. So put that to the test with those three names. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's a it's a great great practice because we've would done you this swap before. a second round pick. This for? is we've done this before where it's like, who would I rather have, Trey Benson or Kendra Miller? Trey Benson. That one is easy for me. Jonathan Brooks, Trey Benson, they slot in ahead of Kendra Miller. One thing to note on Kendra Miller. He's still only 21.9 years old. Uh, he's he's one month older than Trey Benson. Even though he lost his rookie season, he's... he's That's a, wild. Yeah, he came in pretty young. Um, Marshawn Lloyd or Kendra Miller? I'm going to take Kendra Miller. Okay. I think Kendra Miller is as good. I, I preferred him as a prospect to Marshawn Lloyd. You look at the situation around him. So would you would you invest a, a 2025 second right now? A 2025 second right now, I would absolutely do in a heartbeat for Kendra Miller. I think I, that's helpful to put some numbers to it. Yeah, it, he's he's got the talent and ability, and and obviously the Saints they they got Fuaga with their first round pick, so their offensive line should be better this season. And um, you know if if something happens to Alvin Kamara, Jamal Williams is toast. I mean, he ran for 2.9 a carry last year and is absolutely done. that's walked for. Yeah. Um, I am going to jump the line and give you my trade away candidate only because I want to throw his name out there in the Kendra Miller conversation. Okay. I'm curious who it is. You don't know who it is. No, I told you. I I forgot. Javante Williams. <laughs> okay. All right. Would you trade Javante Williams away for Kendra Miller? I would not. Okay. I would personally. Because I know not. you have more. Right, Mike, would you do that? Oh, man. Um, I mean, maybe I should make the case first and maybe you yeah, say I, yes, but. I would, I think the problem is just the the market value of what what, what Javante Williams has seen to be worth. So, I mean, uh, it would you would have to get Kendra plus, but lay out, lay out the case. Well, I, here's the biggest challenge with Javante Williams is you have to attribute a bad year entirely to injury. You are not coming into the season as the guaranteed number one, and then you are entering a contract year, and you have a rookie quarterback, and you have to ask yourself in Dynasty, what's next for Javante Williams? Because I don't think that there's almost any future where what's next for Javante Williams is the Broncos are giving you a bunch of money to be their future at the position when you literally are the only incumbent not selected by the current head coach, the amount of overperformance compared to expectation to me that that would require, which is not outside the possibility or the range of possibilities, but it's low odds. Like you got to go from being objectively bad to objectively great this season, not bad to decent, right? not bad to committee, bad to great for the Broncos to hand you a check to be the guy next season, which means who's handing you a check to be the guy next year after you have a multi-ligament injury, Javante still has that name where, you know, it's not all lit up in lights in Dynasty anymore, certainly, but, like, some of the bulbs are still on for trading purposes. Like, you can still make a case. You go to these, you know, you go to the trade table with, he's 24 years old. He was hurt last year. This guy's got a big future ahead of him, and I don't think that's true, but that's the story that you can paint. And so I'm I'm very concerned about what Javante's 
role on a future roster can be. That's my biggest concern. Whereas I could see Kendra Miller being the guy in New in New Orleans next year. Yeah, for sure. But I don't know yeah. if I see Javante as the guy in Denver next year. Well, obviously, Kendra is only one year into his career, into his rookie contract. Um, when it comes, to, so I am more bullish on Javante Williams' possibilities of being back to full strength this year than I think both of you gentlemen. Certainly more than than Andy. Uh, I see that as a well, full let's at say least fifty fifty outcome. Well, that's what I want to get to, and it serves your point here. If he gets back to full strength and has a great season, he probably still doesn't get the bag from the Broncos because for the Broncos to really say, wow, the, 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 he's got to be the, not just the centerpiece of the offense, which I think could happen, but he's got to be the centerpiece of the offense while they win a surprising amount of games. And with a rookie quarterback, that's probably not going to happen. You're not going to give a big, sizable, long-term contract, second contract to a running back on a losing franchise. That's just probably not going to happen for the Broncos. So from a dynasty perspective, I do agree that if you can capitalize on Javante now, the odds that you know, you're know you playing the, 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 the likely outcome market, and the likely outcome is that he changes teams somewhere to become a committee back or a backup for his next season after 2024, and there's no guarantee and that this one is great anyways. Now, that's still greater sign to me than Kendra Miller, uh, I, but Kendra Miller plus – you know, plus something, sure. And and going back to the Dynasty articles we have in the UDK Plus, uh, Marv wrote this, since 2010, 78% of the running backs' peak seasons occur before turning 24. So not only are you coming back from injury, contract year, not a lot of running backs getting paid big money. I just think it's a tall task, and that's why I put Javante into that trade-away category. Um, Mike, I'll, I'll turn it over to All you right. because – your name is – I think it's interesting. I think he was in the headlines a lot last year towards the end of the year, and so he yeah. may, it may be interesting. It's trade away Amari Cooper of the Cleveland Browns. And Amari Cooper, the greatest thing that he has – with Well, so the second, That was the greatest thing. The, the second greatest thing he did for you uh, last year was – give you a, a temporary boost to his dynasty value. The first greatest thing, of course, being help you actually win a championship because he, it was so he was, awesome. He was a playoff hero. It was hero. so awesome. And it was it was so much fun. But here's the thing about Amari Cooper. Wasn't that the week we almost didn't play him? Um yeah, there was a, a Or maybe that was the next week. Yeah, it was a, Yeah, okay, he was, never mind. We didn't know if he was He got banged he, up he in was that injured game. Okay. and then he went out, but then Joe Flacco was still great and it was just it, the Cleveland Browns of the playoffs, it was really, really fun last year, or fantasy playoffs. But Amari Cooper, he's entering year 10. He's about to turn 30, and he's under the final year of his contract. And I think that Amari Cooper has value. Like, this year, you'll be able to start Amari Cooper as, a, like, a wide receiver two type of a player. But the fear is that you are now on the edge of his value really going in the tank. Yeah, sure. Come at me with Mike Evans. I get it. Mike Evans is is still cooking, and he is over the age of 30. But there are so many superstar players who have seen their dynasty value just plummet from age uh, from 30 to 31. And that's why I'm saying I'm trading Amari Cooper now, trying to be one year early. Julio Jones. Julio Jones was a superstar, mm -hmm. and then he was – the 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 pixie dust ran off and he went in and essentially had no value. AJ Green, Hopkins, Devonte Devonte Adams. If you had traded um, think where Devonte Adams trade value was last year. Much higher. We we just recorded our 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 UDK outlook for Devonte Adams and all three of us Yeah, we compared like, him to Hopkins we're, now. We're all like, "Uh, I mean, he he'll have gains, but the the point is if the value disintegrated. Stephon Diggs, if you had traded him beginning of last year, you could have got a ton. Now, it, his 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 market value has plummeted, and that is uh, that's just the overall dynasty value. And then remember, before the 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 bonanza of that playoff run for Amari Cooper, before Week 16 which week 16 was uh, 24% of his fantasy points it of the year. It was so cool. It was awesome. 
But before that point, he was the wide receiver 27. That's not how we think about Amari Cooper because he finished so strong. That's that's your memory of him. But up until that point, it was it was just okay-ish because Deshaun Watson has been awful. He has been absolutely putrid, and he is, like it or not, he is still the future for the Cleveland Browns at the quarterback position. And now we have multiple years of him being terrible, possibly dragging Amari Cooper's value down even more. So I'm saying, yes, Amari Cooper can help your team this year, but I'm trying to get out right now while I can get I can get a player, I can help bolster some stuff for this year and the future of my dynasty team. And before, what I see is Amari Cooper's value just really going in the tank. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing Jason's tradeaway candidate, but you're going to have to wait just a second. We'll be right back. And that was Jason's tradeaway candidate. Hope you really I enjoyed hope that. You liked it. I I, I hope you get a haul. I hope you get a haul for him. Yeah, and, what a good and, name. You know, a lot of times people are always looking for that real, clear and obvious pick, and I'm glad you got it. Yeah, yeah, that'll do it. So, but who uh, else do you got? We wrapping up the show. Oh, who else? Yeah. I, okay, I'll give you one more. One more. One more. One more. Now that you've heard my best yeah. trade, he's gonna do one more. Here's an okay trade. A bunch of people candidate. rewinding into the ads. <laughs> the trade away candidate for me right now is Najee Harris, a guy that I have um, always been a, a a decent fan of. Not uh, BFF. Not no, a, I not a BFF, kidding. but it's just one of those. Najee the man is awesome. Oh, Najee the man is incredible. But I'm talking about Najee the running back as far as the fantasy asset. He has not been uh, a prolific top-tier guy, but the back half of the last two seasons have actually been really good. He's been solid. He's been a uh, running Baby Yeti. Yeah, he's a baby Yeti. He, you know, as the as the cold weather comes in, people don't want to tackle him as much or whatever. He was a running back 21 last year, running back 14 two years ago, and then obviously his rookie season was great when keeps he was going the, the running wrong back direction. Four. Well, that's the point. <laughs> he keeps going the wrong direction. His snaps went from 84 percent as a rookie down to 66, and last year down to 53 percent of the snaps, which for a Mike Tomlin team is not very normal. His opportunities have gone from 23.6 to 19.1 to 17.3. And the most important thing at the end of the day is your fantasy points per game, 15.5 his rookie season to 11.9, and this last year, 10.6. So we could see that it's trending downward. But he is still a valuable commodity in dynasty leagues as a, you know, as, as a rookie contract running back who is never finished outside of an RB2, and there are so many teams desperate for running backs. But they didn't pick up his fifth-year option, and that's a huge deal to me. That means that he's going to be a free agent at the end of this year. He's not a franchise tag-worthy guy, and we've seen in the past that the Steelers aren't going to pay for the running back. So they're going to let him hit the open market, and I don't know that he's going to get a big bag or a big enough job to be inefficient and effective for fantasy. So this is similar to, like, this is a very similar case to Amari Cooper because I agree, Amari Cooper is going to help your team this year. But eventually, you got to get out while there's value left. And there's very little meat on the bone left for Najee Harris, but you could still get something valuable for him. It wouldn't. I don't think it would surprise anyone here if at the end of this year, Jalen Warren scores more fantasy points than Najee for the same team. But Najee has value right now as someone that is, you know, in his three-year career, never, never finished outside the top 21 running backs. You can get something for him. I think this season it's more mediocrity, and then you might be out of an asset. Would you accept a second-round pick? No, I think you can get more than a second-round pick. It, it, it's one of those weird players where you're you're probably not getting a first, and you're probably not accepting a second. So you've got to find a kind of a a, a player pick combination. I'd like to. And there's find, no picks between those rounds. There's no picks between those like rounds. A hidden Shoot. hidden round. Right, uh, and obviously like the some 13th of the thirteenth floor, or yeah, whatever that is. Yeah. Some of this goes back to the quick question on the day, right? Like, what is your team? If you're a competing team, Najee can help help you. If you're a rebuilding team, he can't. So you got to take a look at your roster and say, okay, if I'm competing, then I need something really good for him. Like, I, you're not going to trade Najee for, you know, my trade for Kendrick Kendra Miller and a second. If you're a competing team, that's not going to help you as much. But if you're rebuilding and you can get a young Kendra Miller who could be the dude next year plus a second and he's not going to help you win a championship this year, okay, I, I would be willing to do that. Mike, do you have any thoughts on Najee? Uh, 
I, I think I'm in most most uh, mostly agreement here. The the reasoning for not picking up the fifth year option, at least maybe it's just PR, but it did make sense to me. Where and I think Warren is in his, Warren's in a contract year too. Uh, uh, double double check that for me. I think he's a year. maybe he's a year away. Yeah. Uh, it was that, that when they were talking about Najee, they like they have a whole new offensive system coming in here. I mean, you got Art. You have Arthur Smith is now the OC, and they want to see how the running backs fit. Which, I mean, maybe you're just being nice and saying we we don't want to give Najee Harris any money. We want him off the team soon. But I think there could be some legitimate truth to that of if it works out and Najee succeeds in Arthur Smith's system, that he would get uh he'd get a smaller extension. So I do I don't think Najee Harris is is a complete I gotta get rid of him type of a player. Because I think there is a world where he re signs with Pittsburgh. He doesn't get a he doesn't get a huge deal, but if he re signs with Pittsburgh, you know that he's gonna be getting a whole bunch of carries. He's had a thousand rushing yards. All three years. That that might be a surprising he, statistic to people. If if Najee Harris had been a third round draft pick, he would be a success story. Correct. But yeah, he was a first yeah, yeah. round draft. Yeah. Pick. That that's all it is. That's the actual the whole story with Najee Harris. He would be, you know, found money in the third, fourth, fifth round of the NFL draft, and you'd be so impressed with the consistency and just plotting his way to success. But because he was in the number, he was a first round draft pick, and the expectations coming out, you're disappointed well, because you, you wanted somebody to, uh, you know, and being RB for the rookie year. You combine that with the fact that the Steelers did get found money in undrafted free agent, you, you know, uh, Jalen Warren. Warren. So Jalen Warren, because he was undrafted, is only a three year deal. But because he was undrafted, means that he's an RFA at the end of this year, which basically means he's a Steeler. Like, RFAs are in prison. That's the uh, – I don't know how no, – no, 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 restricted you, means he can go get an offer for the – right. what, what am I – You're thinking no, no, no. of ERFA. Oh, yes. Those, yeah. An those, RFA, those. if he gets an offer, they have a right to match. Yes. So if – and and the reality but is so, if so, he gets yes. an offer, so he's going to match. So Warren is in the contract. Both of these guys are in the contract deal. And they're trying to – they're going to wait it out and see who fits better. Sure, sure. I think it's high, much higher – much higher odds that Warren would be back as an RFA. But we'll see. Um, all right, let's jump into some Dynasty Mailbag. 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 Ooh, yeah. Uh, I, all right. Honestly, that was, that was great. Spectacular. Um, he held it for a while. I can go longer. No, thanks. Uh, Farron writes in, do you Stamina. think- Stamina. Do you think Raheem Mostert? Yeah, the guys that got it, they say it. Uh, do you think Raheem Mostert has any dynasty trade value, or just ride the wave? I think he has no dynasty trade. I value. think I think you got to ride that wave, my friend. I'm hoping just to. I mean, I went into last year thinking maybe I don't even want him on my roster. Uh huh. And he became the RB two. Everything else after that is gravy. Yep, and and you have him on your roster. Yep. This is not a Derrick Henry situation. You're not getting a first for him. You're probably not even getting a second for him from a contender. Derrick Henry's still going top of redraft leagues. Raheem Mostert in redraft right now is, despite being the running back too, he's like, I think he might even be outside the top 24. And I, I'm talking redraft. Running backs take it. So, yeah, you're not getting anything for Mostert. You're going to get fantasy points from him. 49% of his fantasy points last year came from touchdowns. That is the highest of any top 12 quarterback over six years. Running back. See? <laughs> IG question. Trademark Andrews for Dalton Kincaid? Question mark. I have Allen Ooh. for the stack. Ooh. So I, I said this earlier. I did think about making Mark Andrews my trade away candidate on today's show. But I didn't do that because I don't believe it. I, I just... It's been a little bumpy for Andrews, but when he's on the field, he's been just as effective. And he's 29. And so, you know, I don't know if he's going to be Jason Witten and play well till he's 38, but what if you give him 29 to 34? Is that Mark Andrews going to be more valuable than Dalton Kincaid's career? I, that's a tough question. I would probably do the trade because Andrews has dealt with injuries 
and you know, I think that they have more weapons than Mark Andrews now, and they didn't used to. But it's right on the fence for me. Yeah, it, it is. It is close. I think it's a fair deal. I have Mark Andrews ahead of Dalton in my startup rankings, meaning I would not make this trade. You've still got him under contract for two more years. So does Mike right with now. a ton of dead cap. So he's he's going to be a Raven for a while. He's the clear number one target. We hope Dalton Kincaid becomes the clear number one target. It just hasn't happened yet. I've got it statted that way. But even then, I don't have him statted as the number one target to be as valuable as Mark Andrews, assuming Mark Andrews is on the field. Injury risks, they suck. They've hit Mark Andrews a lot over the last couple of years. Um but I, you know, I don't know that that's very predictable. So I, I've still got Mark Andrews ahead of of Dalton Kincaid. At the very least, though, if you want to make the trade and you want to make the argument the other direction, is that if they're both close to each other, you're getting more youth. I have Kincaid at two. Yeah, then that's it, an easy yeah, trade. That doesn't you. bother me at all. Yeah, As Mark Andrews has proven his uh, the touchdown connection with Lamar. Yep. So and like, even if. You know, his role ends up shrinking at some point of his career. Once they get in the red zone, Mark Andrews will be on the field. And Don Kincaid could grow into that. That that might happen. He had a whole bunch of targets and, and a good amount of yards for a rookie tight end, but he had two touchdowns. Ethan writes in, is T. Higgins a top 15 wide receiver in Dynasty <laughs> right now? T. Higgins, no. T. Higgins is just – it's the worst, man. Trying to figure out – what yeah, T. I mean, Higgins is. T. Higgins is a fine wide receiver. Yes. That's exactly. I, I think he's a good wide T. receiver. I think he is very good. I think he's okay. So we got very good, yeah. good, and fine. Yeah, he's fine. I, I mean, think, he, he look, he, he put he's put up 1,000 yards a couple times, but literally almost on the dot. 900, 1,000, 1,000. He's dealt with injuries. The reason that I don't I mean, have he's him fine. As, a, as a top 15 dynasty wide receiver is because – even though he's young, this is a this is a one and done situation with the Bengals. He's going to play this year. I think he'll be good. When you hit the open market at wide receiver, you're going to get a bag of money. You're going to have someone yes. break the bank for you, and that is nice. But you also see a lot of times these high high dollar shifting free agent wide receivers. They don't always work out. You don't know if he's going to go to a good quarterback or a bad quarterback next year. You do know he's going to. If he's not on the Bengals, you know he's leaving a good quarterback. You know, so if, what if he goes and signs a, a big contract with the Giants to be opposite Malik Neighbors and you don't know the quarterback situation? It's like there's a lot of risk there from a dynasty perspective after this season. He's played four years, and if you give him the best number at every one of these spots, his best would be 74 for 1,091 and 7. So it's hard to make up a top 15 dynasty guy when he's never finished top 15. That's all I'm saying. I think he's a good receiver. But I don't think he's a. I don't think you could go and sign him if you're Carolina, and if you had traded for him this offseason. And like, what if he went to Carolina? What's the season? I bet it's about seventy four for one thousand ninety one and seven. Yeah. I don't know if there's a place he could go and be. Do you think he could be the one? I guess we've talked about that so many times. Yeah, I it's, think he could be a one. I I think he can be a one, but it's T Higgins has just lives in this world of what he could and should be. And then that that against what you're actually getting, so top fifteen, no. Yeah, I don't have Michael Pittman in my top fifteen wide receivers, and they're close enough comps to me. And one of them is already the dude for his team with a massive extension. So yeah. All right, celebrate Dynasty Week with us by going to FootClanGiveaway.com. You can win a signed Devon Achan jersey. And we're giving that away uh, after this week. So go over there. It's free to enter. And um, there's also a new Dynasty podcast out. You can go check that out. Rookie Range of Outcomes episode. The Dynasty podcast every week with Kyle Borgannoni, Matthew Betts, and generally Jason or Mike mm -hmm. joining them. And so I think that's it. I think we're done. The UltimateDraftKit.com. Go check that out. And we will be back with new episodes next week including a Mike versus Andy mock draft Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. goodbye <laughs> thank you for listening to another episode of the fantasy footballers podcast join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com
and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. <laughs>